Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Sargassum Podcast brought to you by Florida International University's Kimberly Green Latin American and Caribbean Center. We're really happy to be with you today, and we're uh, thankful that you've invited us into your home and let us be a part of your life for a few minutes. We've got here with Francesca and Jenna, and our guest today is Sigrid. And before we get things started, um, it's been a, a week or two since we last spoke, and just wonder if there's anything interesting going on with you folks. Um, yeah, here in Mexico, not that much interesting stuff is going on. We don't have that much sargassum because it's the fall, so that's really good. But otherwise, just doing computer work and getting ready for the next sargassum season. What about you, Jenna? Um, I just moved, so that's exciting. Still unpacking. It's going to be a while, but um, settled into my office in my attic where it's like 40 degrees right now. So I'll have to figure that out eventually before we have our next podcast, maybe get a space heater or a comforter or something. But it's really nice to have my own office space instead of sharing a bedroom and having it be multifunctional. So I'm that, happy to be here. That's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So very yeah, cold, yeah. not very yeah. hot. <laughs> 40 degrees Fahrenheit, exactly. How about you, Robbie? I'm just trying to keep it together, and I've got a lot of stuff going on over here, and I'm you know, preparing to return to uh, to Playa del Carmen so I can have a beer with Francisca and then go work on the Maya Project a bit in their first part of the year, and I'll, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe I send an order to Chiapas and get some posh for us to have at the end of that. That'd be really nice, but we're going to just taking things one, one step at a time. We're giving a, today though, Hilario and I, later today, are giving a presentation on uh, uh, biocultural linguistics at a uh, conference, a uh, linguistics conference in, um, at La Universidad Intercultural Maya de Quintana Roo. And also, uh, that's kind of, kind of fun. And all these, these built us a really wonderful presentation. And all this is going to be our, about our, uh, our Maya, uh, science curriculum. And so you yeah. you gonna so we got, we got you gonna join? Going are you joining virtually and hilarious? No, person? I'm not. I, I I think he's gonna. No, nah, I think he's gonna do it all on his own. He's gonna he's gonna start start off with one of those videos we made, and I'll tell him Maya on, and all and uh, and then he's gonna get everybody pumped up and then give the presentation, and I'll say yes, I think I think it's gonna be good. I I don't think I'll be able to join it virtually though. Yeah, I think so, it's yeah. going to be good. So I anyway. Saw pre- I saw his presentation in Playa and it was really good. He, he's, he, he's the best we have. And I'm very, very honored to have him participate with us in this research. And, uh, anyway, that being said, um, the day's a really special day. We've got a, a, somebody from uh, Norway visiting with us and all. And I'm going to let... Um, Francis would give us an uh, introduction to that because her name is much too difficult for me. <laughs> but her name's Sigrid. I got her first name down pat. Anyway, take it away, Francisca. Yeah, I'm going to try, but I don't think I can pronounce it in a Norwegian way either. Um, our guest today is called Sigrid Skilstad. She has a master's in marine science from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And she works as a business developer at Oracle AS. Um, during her studies, she also spent a year at university in Cape Town as an exchange student, um, which is in South Africa. Oracle is a developer and manufacturer of agricultural and industrial machinery, and they're based in Norway. And they recently used their machine to make sargassum bales, and that's why... We invited Sigrid, and we are really excited to hear about this new Sargassum project. Welcome to the podcast, Sigrid. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me on this podcast. Ever since you uh, reached out to us uh, on social media when we uh, did that um, uh, test uh, bailing, uh, we've been so excited that we get to join your podcast. So, so finally the time is here. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for the introduction as well. It's really nice to be here. Mm. Wonderful. Well, well, Sigrid, one of the things we always start off with is, and I, is 
you know, we want to know what sargassum means to you individually and all. And um, since we have a variety of stakeholders, you know, answering this question, you know, everybody's got a very, very different responses. And, um, and so we want to hear your response. What is sargassum to you? Yeah, I think that's that's a very uh, it's a very good question, and and I've been thinking about it, and I think sargassum to me is actually uh, the most exciting project that I have at work. So I'm also uh, I'm I'm a business developer here, but I'm also in charge of one of my main responsibilities is uh, looking into new materials that we can possibly bail with our uh, technology. And uh, Sargassum is just one of the most exciting projects for me. I, uh, I started here a little over a year ago, uh, and Sargassum was actually one of the first uh, materials that I got to investigate and that I got to uh, do a project on. And I've been, um, I've been reading about it uh, ever since, uh, but I've actually never, I've never been to the Caribbean. So I've never, I've never touched uh, sargassum from the sea. I've never seen it fresh from the sea. So I think, um, to me, I don't. I've read a lot about it, and I understand that it's a huge problem. Uh, but I don't think I will ever understand how big that problem is until I go there, until I speak to more people that really uh, feel that problem. Uh, but I think. To me, I think just the more I read, the more I understand that this is just a huge, huge problem. And I think, um, and I think I, I also read a lot about many initiatives that have popped up that that want to solve uh, this problem. But to me, it seems, even though I'm not an expert, but it seems to me that the problem is sort of growing faster than the solutions are. The solutions aren't sort of keeping up. Uh, and I think that what we can offer here is actually, uh, could actually be part of, of that solution. And, and I think, so I think to answer that question in a short way, I think that the opportunity to make an impact for me is actually what sargassum is about for me. It's actually, yeah. When people ask me about work, sargassum is the is the thing I start talking about first because it's just it's so many opportunities and it's and I think especially that opportunity to to make an impact to change something and I really think that we can do that with our uh, technology and I also I also asked a colleague that works uh, with me on this project I asked her what is what is sargassum to you and she was like well. Sargassum is is a seaweed, and we can bail it, and and I think that is sort of short, really, what what it is to us, because we can offer we can offer a solution, but we're by no means the whole solution or the whole value chain, but yeah, so I think that is that is our or my take on on sargassum, yeah. Yes, thank you for that response. That's lovely. I, I was very happy to hear your colleagues say, yeah, we can bail it. That's what it is. And it's something that we can do something about. What what are the benefits of bailing sargassum? Oh, I think there's uh, there's many benefits. And I think, but I think also, I think it's, like I said uh, just now, I think it's important to, uh, for us, it's important to get across that um, we are by no means uh, experts on sargassum. We have a solution, and we can uh, we can talk about uh, what we think are the advantages of that solution. But I think we also we really depend on uh, local forces to tell us also more about the problem and also uh, how we can maybe utilize our uh, technology. But I think my main uh, what I think is actually one of the biggest biggest uh, advantages or benefits of of bailing sargassum is that you can uh, you can bail up to or we think around 30 to 40 tons per hour uh, and I think uh, that is quite a lot and it can actually and I, I think when we're talking about sargassum you hear about these huge volumes and the extreme growth and I think then you also need to have solutions uh, that can can take 
volumes. Uh, and yeah, so we uh, we think that it's quite a conservative number actually to say 30 to 40 tons per hour that we can um, fail as long as our machine is always fed with material uh, in that pace, we can uh, make fails in that pace. So uh, that is one uh, uh, advantage. And I think with that comes also uh, clean beaches, you can you can take out a lot of, of sargassum and you can you can clean the beaches. You can get the tourism uh, industry growing again, and um, yeah, and that I think has a, a, a huge uh, social impact, which is what makes this project really uh, mean something to us. So 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 that's one thing, and then also. Uh, you wouldn't have because it's a closed ceiling. Like you would, you would wrap it in uh, plastic. You wouldn't have any uh, runoffs, so there wouldn't be any. And I think those runoffs can be uh, toxic. There can be heavy metals and all of that. So that wouldn't uh, really leave that uh, closed uh, bale. Uh, and then there won't be any uh, evaporation of of gases also from uh, sargassum, which also is uh, we also think that one of the advantages, which is not yet, we haven't done enough research on that, but we do think that um, over time, sargassum will preserve better in a bale because, uh, because you don't have any access to oxygen. So uh, you would sort of, um, you would sort of stop certain um, uh, deterioration processes by, by uh, limiting oxygen, but but also we n no one has really ever bailed uh, sargassum before, as far as we know. So uh, we do need to uh, test that sargassum that we bailed. We need to test it after a month, after three months, after six months, and after a year before we can really say uh, how the quality, uh, how we can keep the quality of the of the sargassum. But I do think that it it is reasonable to think at least. That that is an advantage, and also it's I mean it's one of the, maybe it's an obvious advantage, but the fact that you can uh, uh, transport it uh, cost efficient and and convenient, uh, and also that you can store it easily, so it wouldn't just be piles and piles and piles of of sargassum, but it would be a neat, clean uh, storage of uh, sargassum, and it also wouldn't uh, it wouldn't take up as much space as it as it would today. I think that is at least a few of the advantages. But again, um, because we don't know the full problem, uh, we also probably don't know all the solutions to it. So, yeah. No, those are fantastic benefits, all of those mm -hmm. things that you just spoke of. I have kind of a side question. Are you mm -hmm. planning on getting to the Caribbean at any point? Or is it in the future for you? Will you be able to go there personally and, and see and speak with people? Yeah, so so that is the next step in this project. So I can I maybe I can tell you a little bit about the whole um, uh, test that we did because I think um, that just gives a bit of an, uh, an explanation as to why we do know a little bit about sargassum but also never have been to the Caribbean. So uh, we we actually uh, started working with a a Finnish company called Origin by Ocean. And they uh, they have been transporting uh, sargassum from uh, the uh, from the Dominican Republic uh, to Finland, where they have a biorefinery uh, process, where they sort of they take out uh, the high value components of sargassum. And so we really uh, wanted to uh, collaborate with them early on because we, we realized that they have a lot of knowledge on utilizing uh, sargassum and we wanted someone to be able to uh, tell us uh, the value of sargassum if stored in a bale. Uh, and then, uh, so then we wanted to uh, work with them and we decided that we have to, we can't really, we can't really sit in Norway and say that we can uh, contribute to this um, problem, we actually have we have to test it. And the first uh, test uh, or the easiest way to test it for us in the beginning was to uh, take a machine uh, to Finland and to uh, bail some of the sargassum that they got uh, from the Dominican Republic. 
So uh, we actually we bailed um, sargassum that was transported in a big bag uh, in a refrigerated uh, container. And then we opened those uh, big bags. Uh, we uh, put them in our machine, fed them into our machine, and we uh, made uh, bales. Uh, so, so that was sort of the first step of this whole project. Uh, and now we, the next step is obviously to go to the uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, because we need to see this with our own eyes, and we also need to, I think, bring a machine because we need to, we need to, um, yeah, we need to start bailing, and we also need to, I think just show people that this is something that we can do and also just demonstrate the whole, like how much of it we can bail. And I think just showing that whole process will will, uh, will sort of help other people start thinking together with us on what we can do with this and how we can, how this can fit into um, a whole value chain sort of. Hmm. Well, on, on behalf of uh, Francisca, and the uh, Sargassum podcast, I'd like to invite you to bring your equipment to uh, Quintana Roo, Mexico, and maybe work with uh, Francisco oh. and UNAM. They have a very good facility there, and they get a lot of Sargassum, and I think mm. it'd be an awesome place for you to, to test your stuff. Mm. That being said, that would be great. Uh, I have a couple of questions. We're, we're, we're never going to get to the next question, I don't think. Um, <laughs> you know, when we're, we're cutting alfalfa here and, uh, you know, gra hay grass and stuff like that. We, uh, you know, we let it dry completely before we bail it up. Um, I'm guessing since y'all, that the, the sargass you had was traveled all the way to, to Finland, that it was, dr that dry weight is what you were talking about. Uh, out in the wild, <clears throat> that may be an issue. You may find some moisture in some of these in the bottom layer. It, like, most of it gets dried up on top when it's up on the beach, but mm -hmm. there's still always a little, seems to be a little bit of moisture in the bottom. Uh, Okay, maybe not always, but sometimes. <laughs> Do you think that'll be an issue if, if some of it has, if, if it's not completely dry through and through? So, so uh, the sargassum that we bailed in Finland was not dry at all. It wasn't, it wasn't dry. The, only, yeah. the thing is that we could actually, um, the, so it was, it was put in these uh, big bags and it was stored um, on top of each other in a container. Uh, of, probably not all the way to the top, but a few layers of these big bags. And you could actually see uh, when we cut those uh, bags open, you could see the difference between um, a bag that was uh, that had been on the bottom and on the top. Because on the top, the, the sargassum still had a lot of structure. It still looked like sargassum. And at the bottom, it had been compressed and it, it, looked, it still had structure, but it was uh, more of a... It was. It looked almost wetter, and it was uh, more of a not a slurry, but it, it sort of looks, yeah, not, it, yeah. It doesn't have as much structure. I think that's the the easiest way to explain it, and I and it was, uh, it was quite wet still, uh, even though probably some of this uh, moisture had, um, had, um, ripped off during the transport. But I think, uh, it was still a very wet uh, material. But I think that is. Um, that is still possible for us to bail, but uh, you need sort of it's we we have a concept here which we call uh, bailability. So the the ability for a material to bail, um, I think we came up with that word ourselves, but at least it's quite a uh, an ex a easy word to to understand. But uh, and and there's a lot of factors that can um, affect a material's bailability, but. Uh, if you an easy way to say it is that there's two really important factors, and the one is uh, moisture content. Obviously, we can't bail water, uh, so it needs to have it can't be only moisture, and um, and also uh, structure is an important uh, part. So we have actually bailed, we have tried to bail uh, Norwegian seaweed, uh, brown algae uh, uh, at the Norwegian coast. Uh, and that was, we could do it, but it was very, that was also very wet, but it also was very slippery. So the structure has no, was no, there was no friction really on the surface there. And sargassum is completely different, has a lot of, has a lot of structure. So even though it is quite wet, it still is, it was actually really easy for us to bail. Uh, so I think, um, yeah, I think that is actually 
it's, it, the, the moisture is not as big of a problem as it might look or it might seem like. But I think uh, obviously the drier it is, the better, because then you don't need to store water, you don't need to transport water. Uh, so obviously the drier it is, the better. But I also, there is also something about how fast you uh, you bail it so that you don't maybe don't have that whole uh, deterioration of sargassum happening first. Yeah, that's extremely interesting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it sounds a bit like like the the two um, two um, qualities of sargassum that you got, like the top one and the mm. bottom one. The top one sounds very much like almost the fresh sargassum that is fresh on the beach. And the, mm. the bottom one sounds like the stuff that is in the surf that gets compacted together and then already kind of starts decomposing a bit. Mm. And yeah, there is some parts, like Robbie said, that's higher up on the beach that dries completely. But if he if he goes back into his memories of when he visited here in Mexico, he will remember those heaps of sargassum that are actually in the surf and are completely wet and are just gooey things um, mm. that are there and that are never drying. So that's why I yeah. was I was shaking my head when he was saying that. Yeah, um, but I do I, I do actually think just a comment that I think. Uh, it was it was really cool for us to see the difference between uh, sargassum stored at the top and at the bottom because I think that just made us realize that we or at least we can it's safe to assume that uh, fresh sargassum is even easier for us to bail because it's that that has even more of that structure intact and I think even though it might still it, it's still obviously wet but it's uh, I think it keep some of that moisture within its structure so uh when you start if you start if you shred it or if you start um sort of destroying that structure it also becomes more wet in a way or you 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 have more of that moisture as a problem so yeah yeah i know what you mean and mm. i think it's also more interesting for end users who want to use it for products for it to be built as fresh as possible Especially mm. if through your studies you find that the baling actually halts the decaying process and that you could keep fresh sargassum stored that way for mm. several months. Mm. Um, my question is, so you said that you started working with this Finnish company mm. um, um, who imported sargassum but were you interested in sargassum before you started working with them or did you start working with them and that started your interest so i think we we did actually when i started working here there was already a project on sargassum but that was initiated by a norwegian cluster uh so it was a lot of norwegian companies actually uh looking at how we could together uh, uh work on this problem so that is how i was introduced to sargassum and i don't think a lot of people here know about sargassum and i when i speak about my work and and what i do uh most people are like, what is sargassum? We don't know about it. Because, and and that's, it, that's weird to me because it's such a, when you read about it, it's such a, it's, it's on, it's, you can read about it everywhere, but still here, it's, we don't know what it is. So, um, so that, and that was the same for me before I started working here, I had no idea. Um, and then I was, uh, and then, but, I, but it, I think it started with someone contacting us about the opportunities to uh, bail it. And um, and then I was part of uh, some meetings um, in that cluster, and then we um, then I was also part of something. So it always all of these things happen like it's a bit random most of it. But then I was part of a program uh, with uh, UNOPS, so it's United Nations Office for Project Services. So it was a, a UN uh, department. And there I had some meetings with people and someone mentioned sargassum and I jumped on that and I was like, did someone say sargassum? Because we have a project on, because it was initially it was on something else or the meeting was about something else. And then they, um, they um, said that um, 
but there is a Finnish company called Origin by Ocean. They have been doing quite a lot of work on sargassum and you should talk to them. And when I sent them an email, they were interested right away. And uh, after that, we've had a good um, a good um, collaboration with them and it's always always great to talk to them about it because they they also have local partners in, in the Dominican Republic and they go to Caribbean quite often. So they have more of that knowledge and they saw the opportunities in our technology. So, so I don't think, uh, I mean, it, I don't think we, we would have realized that our equipment could be used for sargassum unless someone uh, asked us about it. Um, so, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Um, my question is is supposed to be about challenges, but I, I'm 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 looking at your video here that you linked and provide, provided for us, and um, I see the way the baling process is going there, cutting silage, and all. Of course, I'm familiar with that. You know, wheat. I mean, um, cutting stuff, you know, alfalfa and stuff like that for feed products for animals and whatnot. And mm -hmm. I know how that process works, and all. Mm. Um. You know, in Sargrass, I mean, in Francisco's point out a minute ago, that a lot of the stuff's caked up on the beach, close to, and still in the water, and whatnot. <laughs> um, so, when you drive these machines, that or how you expect mm -hmm. these machines, well, are you? Do you have? Can you just kind of describe this for us? Are you are you building a machine that can work in the water? Or does every thing have to be pushed up on the beach for with in windrows? As I, I would imagine in my mind, not that I mean, not that I know exactly what you're doing, because this is certainly a, a process I hadn't never considered before. So you, could you kind of just mm. walk us through how that works? Mm. So so our um, our machines, we call them uh, compactors and they can um, uh, they can compact a lot of, of different materials. But it all started with uh, the traditional round baler for agriculture. Uh, and then we've developed that into yeah, what we now call uh, compactors. And they are uh, all uh, manufactured here uh, in Norway. And uh, we, we have compactors in, on all continents in over 60 countries all around the world. Um, yeah, I think we're maybe we have around 800 of those all around the world. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I said, it start, it all started with agriculture and that is still our, our biggest, um, industry as of today, but, um, uh, we, we were moving into more new materials all the time and we have no idea sort of what is the, what, what the limit of our machine is. So that is quite exciting, but it, I mean, this, the concept is, is really the same. So, uh, you have a, uh, our machine, you have a feed hopper on the machine where you can load material uh, into it and then that material goes up an elevator into a chamber where it gets compressed and um, and quite a lot as well we actually in Finland we we took these we um, we had these big bags of I think they said around 300 kilos per uh, big bag and we said like okay maybe we need like three three of these big bags then but we had to be like no bring more big bags bring more big bags because one uh, bale of ours was over it turned out to be over 1.3 tons uh, so we, we needed a lot of these um, of these uh, big bags but um, so so it really gets uh, compressed in that chamber and then it uh, leaves the chamber and goes on to a, a wrapping table and there it gets uh, wrapped with uh, plastic. It also gets wrapped inside the chamber to keep its shape. But it goes onto a wrapping table and it gets uh, wrapped with um, more uh, plastic film. And um, and it can I mean I think the, the the best setup for our machine uh, for sargassum would be to have the machine on the beach, but and not on the water sort of, but to have it close to the beach and then um, feed it from there. Um, I think that would be the easiest setup. But it's not a uh, it's 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 not a machine that you sort of uh, that you drag behind a tractor like you would on a field uh you, you you it's a stationary machine you put it somewhere and it's there and you feed it but uh it can easily be moved so you can easy, easily hook it on a tractor for example and move it so if there is a lot of sargassums 
at one place you can easily move it there but then you place it there and it's sort of stationary there and and you feed it from there so um yeah i don't know if that is the best explanation but it's at least it gives you an idea of of how it works hmm. oh no that, that's a very good explanation i was picturing that it was something that you equipment that you pulled behind a tractor and I'll, um, because that's been mostly my experiences. So thank you for uh, clearing that up for us. You kind of touched on this already, but do you have to process the sargassum at all before you're bailing it with the machine? Do you need to clean it or do anything or you're just going up there and collecting it as is? So what we, uh, what we did in Finland was actually, that was just sargassum as it is. I mean, after a few weeks of traveling from the Dominican Republic, but uh, but that was untreated uh, sargassum, and I do think that, I mean, you can shred it, but I do think that you you um, you sort of ruin a bit of that structure. So I don't think it's, I mean, if you shred it a little bit, I think that's fine because our machine can do quite small fractions, but uh, but there's no problem to bail whole sargassum. Uh, that was easy, and I mean. If it's dried, sure, that's an advantage that will help, um, and you will bail more dry matter, which is cheaper to transport, cheaper to store. It's you, you use less plastic uh, and all of that. So there's obvious advantages in in drying it a bit, but but you can bail it as is. And and in terms of of cleaning it, I mean. Any machine would probably be very happy if there was less salt water involved uh, or seawater. But uh, but I think here again, I think the benefit of of just bailing it straight from the sea might be bigger than the disadvantages of of the machinery having to deal with a bit of, of seawater. So so um, yeah, but I mean that. Yeah, that can be. I, I think that can be different from from setup to setup, but and and that's where we again are interested in in local uh, thoughts and and views on this because I don't think I think we just need we need to be very clear on the fact that we we are not we don't know the whole how this whole thing can work, but uh, yeah, I do we I I do think that we have a, a something that might contribute. Mm. But it, it sounds like a very fascinating process, and I'll add, I'm not sure mm. exactly what Jenna meant by cleaning, but it's a very important question. But and when we're breaking this stuff up and they're, they're gathering this stuff up, one of the big issues I see, and I'll add, I think everyone will agree with me, is when they're breaking this stuff. They get a lot of sand off the beach, so when they haul this stuff away, mm. a lot of the sand is removed from the beach, and that's a big issue. And I'll mm. um, so has that been taken into consideration? I think that is that's a that's a great question, and and uh, again, any machine would uh, would appreciate if there's not a lot of sand in there as well. But um, and and so I think and so I think using our machine, I think it would be an advantage if the sargassum is harvested in the sea, and so it, that it doesn't have a lot of sand in it. But we, I mean, we do bail. All, all around the world, we also bail uh, landfills. So we will bail landfill waste, and there also you do get some sand in it, and all kind of weird things that people want to bail. So, so I mean, a little bit of sand, sure, probably not going to be a problem, but it's not something that the machine will be super happy about. <laughs> so, so the, the less sand, the better. Yeah, but it's a it's a good question. Yeah. I think the, the next question I have, we already kind of touched on. So about the freshness. So you said dry mm. sargassum is good, fresh sargassum is good. And then when it starts decaying, it becomes a bit harder. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about the freshness that you need? I think we have just throughout this whole project, we've just been working on how we can bale sargassum as fresh as possible. And that's, again, not my field of expertise, but I do think I've heard that uh, that sargassum starts to deteriorate quite fast. And 
and being able to uh, maybe stop some of that those processes quick will uh, have a huge uh, advantage. So I think, and I think that the the containers that come from the Dominican Republic, in order for uh, Origin by Ocean to use it uh, in their biorefinery process, it needs to have a certain quality, and that's why they need to transport all these sargassum in. Uh, cooling containers or refrigerated containers uh, and that's also something that we want to look into maybe we don't need those maybe we don't need a container at all maybe it can be just uh, put on a on a vessel as is and 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 obviously you will that will be a lot cheaper um, but uh, I think I mean if it's dried it's just going to be easier if it's a mix of dried sargassum and fresh sargassum also probably gonna just gonna get a higher dry matter in the bale and it's it's even easier to bale but i think our project the focus has been to to just bale it as is and and as fresh as it is uh, and i think that is possible but that is the next step we want to go to uh, the caribbean and we want to bring a machine and we really want to test it there in the right environment hmm. Well, we got a big old beach in Playa del Carmen waiting on you to bring your equipment there. And I'm excited. Um, would you tell us a little bit about the? <laughs> please come, please. Um, would you tell us a little bit about the recycled plastic that you're using for the bailing process? Yes. So, uh, so we do have a plastic uh, that is, or we call it film, agricultural film, really, uh, that has. 35% uh, uh, recycled material in it and uh, yeah that's that's just it's just a way to offer uh, our customers to, to be a bit more uh, sustainable and also uh, we always encourage uh, all our customers to to um, to really treat their the used uh, film uh, well and and deliver it at a recycling facility so that can be used again as new film. So we do also have a project on that, which we call uh, Oracle Closed Loop. So we've done a project where we look into if we can if we can recycle that uh, agricultural film or that the plastic that we use uh, for our bales, if we can recycle that and use that as new agricultural film, uh, we think that the quality of that film might be better as well if we keep that high, because it's a high quality polymer. So to keep it in a closed loop um, will also improve the quality. So uh, yeah, I, I, that's um, what we mean by our recycled uh, plastic. But there's, so there's 35% uh, recycled material in it. And yeah, we, all, we have projects uh, with uh, film uh, producers on, on increasing that amount and also on using, instead of using just any type of uh, recycled plastic, actually using uh, recycled agricultural plastic in, in that new agricultural plastic. So, so we do have some projects on that as well. Mm. That's fascinating. Hopefully that comes along quickly as well. So that will be nice for the users to be able to be more mm. sustainable. Mm. Um, if our listeners want to start doing this, if they want to be involved in this process, mm. what's the timeline as far as you guys rolling it out for availability? And would they rent a machine from you or do they purchase a machine? What does it look like um, on the other end of this for the users? Mm. So, so now our uh, the next goal for this project is to get a machine uh, to the Caribbean around April. Uh, so for the next season to start, I guess the season starts at different times at di in different places. Uh, but we uh, we've uh, started some discussions on on getting a machine down there um, for further uh, trials and and to collaborate with uh, local partners there. But I think if anyone finds this interesting, uh, we really we really just want to talk to 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 anyone who who thinks that this can be part of of the solution and and that our technology can make an impact here and which we think it 
can, but if anyone else agrees with us, we would love to talk to, to anyone. Uh, and I think in terms of uh, purchasing a machine or renting a machine, we are open uh, for those discussions because it's a completely new thing for us and for everyone else. So I think it is, um, we, we also need to try this thing out and see see what works best. But we are we're open for all these discussions. But the only thing we know for sure is that we need um, we need someone to, to join us on this because we we don't have a office in the Caribbean, so we need to, um, yeah, we need local partners and and local knowledge uh, as well. But I think in terms of uh, of the whole setup, we are very very open to to ideas um, on that. So for anyone listening who's interested in collaborating or interested in being an end user, you can find the information to reach out to. Sigrid and the company Orkel in the show notes. Perfect. Great. Yeah, I think that's all the questions we had for you, Sigrid. It was really, really interesting. Unless Jenna and Robbie have more things to ask you. And yeah, I thought it was super interesting. You're definitely the first company who is doing the bailing, but I've heard other people talking about wanting to do it and the benefits of why they want to do it, especially for valorization. So I'm very excited to see um, your results later on as well on how the sargassum um, decomposes or doesn't decompose Mm. in the bales. I think that's going to be really interesting to know. Thank you. Really appreciate that. I think, uh, yeah, this has been a good and conversation. You know, you know, one of the, it, it has been indeed. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, one of the big problems out there in the sea, especially with these industrial fishing fleets, is is they feel like the the sea is just this vast field or or pasture where all they got to do is drive their combine through there and just harvest, 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 and they never have to plant or do anything at all. Mm. And um, and you guys have actually built a combine to drive through the sea and deal with some of the issues that are, you know, from negative anthropogenic impacts on our, on these valuable ecosystems. So uh, thank you for building a better combine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And with that, we appreciate your being with us today. We want to thank the Florida International University's Kimberly Green uh, Latin American and Caribbean Center for bringing us into your homes today and uh, thanks for learning with us together. Thank you, Sigrid, for being with us. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me. <laughs> well, that was a very interesting uh, interview today. Uh, we we rarely get a chance to mix terrestrial and marine farming and um, that was all really exciting to me. And what do you folks think? Yeah, I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, I was It was really interesting to hear um, what all you can use the sargassum bailing for. Because when I was looking at this, I was mostly thinking, oh, you can keep the sargassum for longer for um, uses afterwards, which... They still don't know if you can or not. They have to do their their studies on it, right? But all the things she said, like it's easier to transport, um, it compacts down, so you it uses less space. You you don't have anything coming out of it. So thinking about all those landfills of sargassum that we have, and how this would change those landfills yes of course they would look less natural it it would be a bunch of um, plastic wrapped sargassum on there but there wouldn't be any leakage anymore into the soils if you use it like this so it seems like it can be a, a solution for more than one problem here as well so that that sounds really interesting to me and it was also interesting to hear that they actually do bail landfills, which I never heard about. And yeah, it was it was quite cool. 
yeah the volume too the that she spoke about i mean that's really fantastic if they can continue pulling that much volume of sargassum off beaches yeah we just have to now actually pull it off the beaches that fast like um she said the best thing to bail is fresh stuff from the sea and at least here in Mexico, over 90% are still collected on the beach, despite Mexico having this fleet of sargaceros and boats to, to do the rest of the work. So, um, we, yeah, there's still a lot to be done, I think, all over the Caribbean to collect more from the sea rather than from the beaches. But if we have things like this in place, maybe there's more incentives to do so. Exactly. Once people find out that this is an option that's viable, then potentially more people can get on board. Yeah. And another thing I found interesting is that she said whenever she talks about work, she mentions sargassum first. And and that in Norway, where she actually has to explain what sargassum is, but it's so exciting to her that she, she goes through that um, trouble of explaining the whole sargassum problem to people when explaining what she does for work. And it's just interesting because when I talk to people who aren't marine biologists and I introduce myself to them and say, I'm a marine biologist, here in Mexico, I always add to it that I work with sargassum because that's something local people can relate to and then they know what you're doing. Well, <clears throat> she's just so passionate about one of her projects, which is the sargassum project, that she mentioned sar that she works with sargassum to people who have no clue what it is and makes them excited about it too. I loved her enthusiasm. Yeah, she was very enthusiastic about this project. We need more people like that out there. Yeah, it, 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 it was a bit contagious and all. And uh, but anyway, everybody, thank you for coming and learning with us today. We really appreciate you joining us here and letting us into your homes and your phones and wherever you're listening to us and all and we always appreciate you guys and uh we also appreciate the kimberly green uh center for latin american and caribbean studies for uh, bringing us into your homes today anyway thank you very much and we'll see you again in a couple of weeks bye-bye bye-bye and don't forget to look at the show notes so you can see videos of how this bailing is done in their social media and Get in touch with Sigrid through LinkedIn or other means and and get your bailing machine in the Caribbean. Thank you for tuning in today and learning with us from our guests. If you want more information about what our guests talked about today, check our show notes for links and information in our archive. And don't forget to like and share our podcast with your friends. If you enjoy our podcast, please consider supporting us financially by becoming a patron. For as little as a dollar per month, you can support us and get the exclusive benefit of submitting questions for our interviewees before the interview. The Sargassum Podcast is produced by Marine Conservation Without Borders and is made possible with financial support and consideration from the Kimberly Green Latin America and Caribbean Center, U.S. Department of Education Title VI grant. It is produced by Jose Martinez, Alex Danielli, Cleo Maradakis, Francisca Elmer, and Aloise Lopez, and is hosted by Robbie Figpen, Francisca Elmer, Jenna Contuccio, Florence Menez, Cleo Maradakis, and Paula Diaz. We will be back in two weeks with another exciting guest. The music for the podcast is from the song Then I Pray by Drizzle, the Ron Drama, an artist from Rotan. Follow him on Spotify and YouTube for my music. But for now, this is the full song Then I Pray. <laughs>